close till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't wanna waste what's left The storms we chase are leading us And love is all we'll ever trust Yeah, No, I don't wanna waste what's left And on and on we'll go Through the wastelands, through the highways Till my shadow turns to sun rays And on and on we'll go Through the wastelands, through the highways And on Hey guys and welcome to the vlog. So today's vlog is going to be a little bit different than most vlogs because I went to Missouri Boys State and if you know anything about it, it's a very fast paced, non-stop type of program. So I didn't get a chance to sit down and talk. So I decided to make it more of a summary of what happened, my experience, and what I took out of it. But before I get into anything else, first let me give you guys some context. So I got chosen by my teachers to go to Missouri Boys State. I didn't know what to expect because all I was told was you pretty much build a state from the ground up. So I thought it would be interesting, but I knew it was made up of like the best of the best kids and it really intimidated me. So I really didn't know what to expect. So when I got to Boys State, I had to get out and go to the back of my car to give them my information. After that, they told me to go and drop off my stuff in my city, which if you guys were wondering, it was Emerson City. And when I dropped off my stuff, I met one of our counselors and he said to go to the registration building and get registered. So I went down to the registration building, they took my picture, I got my ID, and I walked back and we had a little bit of a meeting. We all stood up and said who we were, an interest, what size school we went to, and I realized that I was from a really small school compared to everyone else. And then there wasn't much else that happened that day. We kind of just went to an assembly. I think we had a speaker that night. I'm pretty sure we did. I think it was Danforth. And then we went back to our city and went to bed. So the first day wasn't really the most eventful because it was the very first day. Day number two is when I realized how packed the schedule is going to be because we woke up at 6.30, we had to get our temperatures checked, we had to fill out a COVID survey, and we had to get out the door by 7 to go eat breakfast. And that's how it was every morning. And a quick tip is that you don't get used to waking up that early. Trust me, I wish I did, but you didn't. After that, the only major thing of note for me that day, because they had all the election stuff for some other positions, was we got to pick our school of instruction, and obviously I went into journalism. And I got to kind of spitball ideas about what to put in the newspaper. I didn't get anything in the newspaper because that wasn't really what I was going for and I couldn't think of anything. And that was, that was pretty much Day number two for me, and we had another speaker. All the speakers, by the way, were amazing. So day number three was when everything started to pick up steam really fast because we finally got into our schools of journalism and got to start making stories. And I decided that I was gonna join the business beat because I was gonna be just covering business stuff and all that kind of stuff. And that would've been fine, but then I get approached by two people from my city and they're like, hey, we want to make a story for the TV news about you vlogging there, which I know how, how ironic, but and I was like, okay. So that kind of messed up me making a story for that day, but I got to be on the TV and it blew my mind. I didn't get a video of me on the TV, I got a, like, I'll show you like for a split second, I got a video of me up on the screen, but it's not like it's the full video, you can't really see much of it, but it blew my mind that I was actually going to be doing that. So that was the next big thing that happened to me, was that I was on the TV that night, and past that point, which some of you guys probably watching did this, was I would walk down any street or down the sidewalk and people would just be like, hey, you were that vlogger dude. 
that happened to me so much, it blew my mind. And I didn't know how to feel about it. I thought it was pretty cool, but I really did not know how to handle it. So at the end of that day, I was super tired. I called my mom, which I, I did every night, and I was like, hey mom, I was on the TV. Uh, it's really cool. I did not expect to be. They did it about my videos and vlogging, and she thought that was really cool. So day number three was probably one of the biggest days for me. So I thought for sure day number four couldn't top day number three. And I was wrong, so let me explain. I wake up, we, we do the whole routine in the morning, and we go to breakfast. I can faintly hear my name. And what I hear is the radio broadcast from that was made the day before. And it talked about me and my whole vlogging thing. And it, it blew my mind. Boy State students pursuing the play button. There are citizens at Boy State who decide to create content throughout their Boy State experience. experience. So today, we are putting their creativity on the map. So with that being said, we are introducing Ricky Fishback from the Emerson Empire. Now, Ricky is a YouTuber, and on Ricky's YouTube channel, he focuses on vlogging his life and interviewing different people. Since he's making transition into college, he's going to start making college vlogs. So his primary audience is college and high school students. So obviously that was really cool. I did not expect to hear more about the vlogging, which is cool, free publicity, but I didn't know I was gonna be on it. So it was something that kind of hit me and I'm like, oh my goodness, I heard it again, which was cool. So I'm thinking nothing can top this. This week is gonna be downhill from here. I think I've hit the peak and I was so wrong. I went into the journalism room where they did everything and I was asked if I wanted to be on the broadcast, and I said sure. And I got to be the anchor, which was really cool. I was amazed, because it was a full broadcast room. There was a green screen part, there was a huge cameras, there was a teleprompter I had to read off of, and I did it, and I realized, as I'm doing it, that they had me cover one of my own stories. It turned out really nice, and people, like started yelling my name because I was on the TV the night before. And after that point, I had people also point at me and say, hey, you were the anchor that one time because it turned out good. The whole broadcast turned out really good. So I really was excited for the rest of the week because I was thinking, is there gonna be more stories like this? Can I still do cool stuff like this? So I left there and we had the speaker and then I went back to my room, called my mom, told her about it, and then I went to bed really happy. I'm gonna be honest, by day number five, I was really happy. I didn't expect to be on the news that much, I was having so much fun, met some awesome people on the media team, and I didn't think anything could top it again. And then I get a call from Apollo saying, hey, I got a big juicy story. I'm setting up a press conference. I need you there. So I had to run from the writer's room, which is in the library on the one side of the campus. And where he was, was on the complete other side. So I got there and he had a press conference and it was a really kind of rushed quick thing because we had to leave to lunch right afterwards. And it was too late to run the story. So I was kind of disappointed that we didn't even get a newspaper story about it. So that was a big story, but they had a court case that went into the next day. And when I talk about tomorrow, that's when I'll get in more into that. But this was starting to turn into a huge story. So day number six was the court case. So the government was suing Legion Bank, which was the main bank at Boy State, because they were operating without a business license and they were committing tax fraud. So I got to go in the court case, and I had to leave pretty early to get in there, and I recorded the whole thing. And I got some good footage of it, and the court case ended up having it where he was let off because there was confusion about, is he the one getting sued, or is it the bank getting sued? They didn't really do a good job of saying that. 
So, it was pretty much ultimately, he got acquitted. Which, obviously, you guys are probably like, who cares? But that's the big part of the story. So that was, that was the end of it. I gave my SIM card of my camera to the video guys, and they've used it, and gave it to me later. So I got to see it on the big screen, and it turned out amazing. And in my opinion, was probably, if not the most, one of the biggest stories of Boise State. Take a quick watch. More problems arise as citizens file a lawsuit against Legion Bank for tax fraud and giving loans without a business license. Emerson Empire's Ricky Fishbeck is on the case. On Wednesday, Legion Bank was charged with tax evasion and operating a business without a license. Today, they had to go to court and they were represented by a dean of the Commerce School, Charles Flint. They claim that he has an unregistered business. Well, specifically in the handbook, it actually mentions that the owner of the business are the ones that must acquire the business license, not any employee. If a business in the real world had an employee that didn't know that it was an illegal business, can we try them for their individual acts as well? As said earlier, we are not suing Charles Flint. This is against the bank. He is serving as the representative of the bank. Because as he said, his role is representative for the bank filling in for Neil. Business owners are responsible for obtaining the appropriate license for their businesses, not business employees. What has been decided among this case? Jury finds not guilty on both counts. Yeah. Oh, not guilty. Oh. Oh my gosh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I feel the evidence was strong. We had three witnesses come in. There was multiple, multiple pieces of evidence we submitted. I feel like it was very clear that we were not suing the defendant himself, but him as a representative of the bank. So I don't know if that's what the issue was. It wasn't clear enough to them, but I do believe that the decision was not made correctly. It turned out amazing again. It took so much work. All of the video in that was video I took. Towards the very last day with the court case, I did have help with somebody held the camera in the intro and the outro of the video. And I was giving a um, little screw mount for the top of my camera that had a receiver so we could use like one of those pin microphones. So it turned out really good. And I got so excited. So day number seven was kind of sad. It was our last full day at Missouri Boys State and I had to leave the guys the next day. So I know I haven't talked much about the people in my city and I'm sorry about that. So I'm gonna talk about them right now. They were the best group of guys I have ever met. We were all from completely different backgrounds, different school sizes, different areas of the state. We all were either athletic or we were really into government or obviously we had some people into journalism. And we were so closely knit. If I didn't have them as a part of my Boys State experience, it would have not been the same. The counselors too were so awesome. They were probably the best group of guys I've ever met, if I haven't said that already. So it made the day kind of have a somber effect because I knew I had to leave them the next day. By the end of the day, we had our final big rally besides the uh, Democracy in Action one the next day. So I could finally kind of let it all out because I was very, I tried to be very refined while I was there because I was doing journalism. I didn't want to be going crazy. So I got up in the front with everybody else and jumped up and just had a lot of fun. And we went back to our cities and we had a serious moment after we ate some pizzas and learned a lot about our counselors. And then we kind of sat in the dark with a flashlight in the middle and we just talked about our Boy State experience. And we talked about all the baggage we all brought and how we felt about it and how it affected us. <sighs> I'm actually crying, geez. Um, so we went real, I'm gonna be honest, I think we went past midnight, we, we talked, and it was, it was sad. I was really sad. So that night ended with me going to bed and dreading the next day, which technically was 
that day. So the final day, day eight, was the day we were leaving. It finally set in to everybody that we were leaving in about a couple hours. There was that hanging over everybody. And it was, again, very hard. So we went to the Democracy in Action assembly, which was the big final assembly. It was a really big like pep rally almost kind of thing. And we went through it and it ended. And we all had to say goodbye. I already said goodbye to all of them beforehand and they all left before I could get a chance to say goodbye to them because I had to go stop and talk with some of the journalism guys because I wanted to say goodbye to them. And I left. It was hard. And I was not ready for it. So let me give you my final thoughts on it. And then after that, I'll tell you about my journey home and what happened after I got home. My experience at Boy State was life-changing. I met some amazing people. I learned a lot more about journalism, obviously. I made lifelong friends, hopefully. And I just... I learned so much. I learned how to do better interviews. I learned how to have more confidence. And I learned how to be a leader because there was so much that we did there that prepared us to go back and lead back at home and it truly changed me like they're saying is a week to change a lifetime they're not lying don't think they're lying they're not and it really oh it hit me hard because it truly was a week to change a lifetime so that's it. Thank you guys so much for coming along. If you've gotten this far into the video, thank you. I do appreciate it. For all the new people that subscribed after Boy State, thank you guys so much. And for everybody that's waited, thank you. Please consider liking and subscribing and leave a comment down below of any questions you have about Boy State or about anything. And thank you so much for watching. A quick note before I end it, I am not sponsored by them, but I'm going to thank them. Where I am right now is in the woods behind the Arcade Valley Roasting Company, and I'm being able to use this because of them, so a big thank you to them. And if you guys didn't know I was in here, and you guys are watching this right now, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, so thank you guys so much. I can't wait to make some more videos now that COVID's kind of slowed down for me because I'm vaccinated. And it's the start of something amazing. Thank you guys, and I cannot wait to see you guys in the next video.